Okay, before I start today's Project Arcade and Amiga setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm always really appreciative. So we're talking about Amiga today for Project Arcade. If you're new to Project Arcade, check out my playlist and I'll leave a link in my description for the initial setup guide for this. So we're looking at all the Amiga systems today. Of course, we're not gonna be doing the so-called Amiga CDTV because it wasn't an Amiga that was literally Commodore CDTV, regardless of what it says in Project Arcade. So we're looking at the Amiga 500, the Amiga CD32 and the Amiga 1200. I'm not gonna bother with the Amiga 4000 model today, uh, but we're gonna work on these. So what we're gonna do first of all is go into the Project Arcade directory. We can actually do that by right clicking on the Project Arcade shortcut, go down to open file location, and we're first of all gonna go into the BIOS folder just here. And we're gonna work with the A500 model first. This is likely the most popular game wise. Now we're gonna need some kickstart files for this. If you don't know where to get them, head over to Amiga Forever. It's a great package and you get your kickstart files with that. These three just here are what we need for the A500 games or model. So we got kick 33180.A500 followed by kick 34005.A500 and we finally got kick 371. 75.a500 so these are what's considered as your bios files for project arcades what i'm going to do is just put these into my bios directory next up we're going to just go into the cd32 this time around and we're going to need a separate bios file for this in fact we got two here so for amiga cd32 we need the kick 460.cd32 followed by the kick 460.cd32.ext which is of course dot extension so we're going to copy both of these two into the bios folder and finally, we're also going to need a kickstart file for the A1200. So here it is, kick 468.A1200. And that's the only kick file you need for the A1200 model. So next thing we're going to do then is go into the ROMs folder and we're going to start adding some games to this. So right at the top, you're going to find Amiga 500. And Amiga 500 is pretty much the mass majority of Amiga games were remembered from the A500 era. So for this, I've got a couple of games here. We got Zool and Zool 2. These are both considered A500 games. If I just pop both of these games, which are on .zip file extension, they work fine. Other file extensions, which are accepted with Project Arcade, are .adf, although those are very slow, uh, .uae, .ipf, .dmz, uh, .lha, and many others. But really, .zips work fine with this. If I come out of here, I'm next going to go down to the Amiga 1200. And I've got a brand new game for this, or a fairly new game, what's considered as homebrew, I suppose. And this is Ooze, and this is a great game. And this one, I'm gonna put in the Amiga 1200 folder. So once we're in Project Arcade, it's not gonna show a new system. This will actually go under Amiga, but it will show us in Project Arcade that this is actually an Amiga 1200 game. We'll see that in a minute. If I come out, finally, we've got the Amiga CD32. So for this, I've got Alfred Chicken in .chd file extension. Just pop that one inside. And that's about it. So we're now going to go into Project Arcade. And here we go then. So we're inside Project Arcade and we should find Amiga and we got Amiga CD32. So like I just said, there isn't an Amiga 500 and Amiga 1200 symbol. 
both of those models will qualify just as Amiga. If we go inside, we can see here, Ooze is Amiga 1200 because I put this one in the A1200 folder and we got both of these A500 games. If we go into CD32, we got Alfred Chicken. Now, let's just check the options menu. If I press select on my controller and go to advanced system options, everything here works fine with auto. It's going to be using PUAE, which is a retro watch retro core, and this should open up fine. So I'm going to go to start new game. And here we go. So complete with decorations which looks pretty cool we can actually disable those which i'll show you in a minute if you're new to project arcade So as you can see, CD32 is working fine, but like I said, we can take away the decoration for this. If we just go into the Amiga CD32 options. Okay, so if I go into advanced system options, to so take away the decoration, it's currently on default unglazed. If I want to get rid of this altogether, all I need to do is go to none and that will take the decoration away. We can go to game aspect ratio for CD32. By auto, this is going to be set to having those black bars on the side. We can put this to 16 by 9 or we can even put it to 4, but some games might look pretty stretched. So if I open up the CD32 game with these video settings... And there we go, so no decoration, so we got a full screen. And absolutely dreadful with that game so anyways let's move on to the amiga and so we're going to start with amiga 1200 so if i open up the view options in here as well advanced system options everything's set to auto if we just open up ooze and here we go so this one's determined by the decorations which clearly says a1200 on the left hand side and because this is a .adf file, it's also acting like a real disc. So you've got that very nice clunking noise of the disk drive itself. So a very cool game indeed, and I totally recommend that one. That Ooze game is actually on the C64 as well, which I prefer because I'm a Commodore 64 fanboy. Uh, but going back to video settings, we can actually change the video settings on that as well. Same method as the CD32. And I'm also going to test out the Amiga 500. So we got two Amiga 500 games here. I can actually set video settings per game if I wanted. If I hold down the A button on my Xbox controller and just go to advanced game options, I can then change the video options for the original Zool game, where I can go to Zool 2 and give that game particular looks if I wanted to. So if I open up, say, the original Zool game, 
And here we go. So this time we got the Commodore A500 rather than the A1200 because I put this game into the Amiga 500 folder. Now let me just remind you, because we're using RetroWatch, if you press spacebar, you can actually fast forward. <laughs> And there we go, very cool stuff. And I'm gonna show you some extra features for video settings, which might be a little bit more nostalgic looking for some people. So to do this, I'm gonna press my A button and do this for Zool 2. Like I said, we can actually set video settings per game rather than applying video settings to the games as a whole. So by pressing the A button, I'm gonna go down to advanced game options. And for this, I'm gonna to go to shader set and try out Curvature, it's one of my favorite shaders. To use this, I'm gonna to go to Decorations and I'm actually gonna apply None. And Game Aspect Ratio, I'm gonna try this one on 16 by nine. It might possibly look a little bit stretched, but you can always use full screen if needs be on that. Vertical Sync, I'm always gonna say, put this to yes, that takes away screen tearing games. Internal Resolution, I'm gonna try this at 1440p. And visual rendering, I can actually go to smooth games and turn this on. So it'll take some pixelation away. We also got color depth. I can put this to 24 bits, give us a bit more added color. And I'm going to try out this game. Now, before I do try out this game, if you get black screen on any of your systems, it's always worth going to drivers, video, and trying the different backends just here. As you can see, by auto, this works fine for me on OpenGL. If that's not your case, try Vulkan or DirectX. So I'm going to leave this to auto and open up Zool 2. And don't forget, we also need to add artwork to our games. You can sign up with Screen Scraper to do this. All we need to do is just go to main menu by pressing start button, scroll down to scraper, make sure Screen Scraper is enabled here. Under scraper settings, I'm gonna leave these settings as they are, so image source, box 3D, and so on. At the bottom here, you can pop your username and password from Screen Scraper. Next thing we're going to do is just go down to systems included and I'm going to select none. Then I'm going to just pick out the systems I want artwork scraping for. So we got Amiga OCS ECS and Amiga AGA and Amiga CD32. So I'm going to just select those, go back and then scrape now. Okay, once that's finished, we're going to go to game settings, update game list and yes. If I go into CD32, we now got artwork. And if I go into the Amiga folder, we've got Ooze, which has got a really nice box art just there, but no preview video with this one. And here we go. So Zool hasn't scraped. And the reason that is, is because we've likely got underscore version 1.3. If we just quit out of Project Arcade, so start and then quit Emulation Station. What we're actually going to do then is go back into the Project Arcade directory. And it was an Amiga 500s game. So I'm going to go to our Amiga 500 folder. 
And just here, if I right click on the game file, show more options, rename, if I take away the underscore version 1.3 and just leave it as all.zip, it's quite likely going to scrape this time. So if I go to Project Arcade, and if I hold down on my A button, I'm going to just scrape for this game individually because the other one's already been scraped. And if I go to scrape, and here we go. So it's found different versions of Zool, and obviously I'm going to be going for the one that's already highlighted, which is all Ninja the Oomph Dimension. And here we go. And that's it then for today's Project Arcade and Amiga setup guide. So I've done Amiga 500, Amiga 1200, and also the Amiga CD32. Like I said at the start of the video, if you're new to Project Arcade, check out the initial setup guide to get you up and running with that. And I've also done some additional setup guides such as MAME. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.